listeners and welcome to another episode of the Enoch Generation, a generation that walks with the Lord. Today in our studios we have with us Dr. Priscilla Kumari, who is a retired vice principal from one of the leading colleges in Chennai, India. She has come to share with us her walk with the Lord. Welcome, Doctor. Thank you. Um, it's so nice to have you with us in the studio today. I'd like you to tell us something about your childhood days. How did your walk with the Lord begin or where did it begin? What sort of a family background do you come from? Thank you. Um, when I think of my childhood, I can only think of three words. One is growing in the knowledge of Christ. Wow. Mm -hmm. And another one is prayerful life. Prayer. Importance okay. of prayer. And thirdly, to be humble. And awesome. all these three were taught by my mother. And uh, just for you to know, my second name is Jabba Kumari. Okay. Right. So actually, it was given by one of one pastor's wife when I was born. So I don't know. Maybe it was prophetic mm. that you know much of my ministry or walk with God would involve prayer, and that started in childhood. So I was taught by my mother to pray. Oh. And my mother, incidentally, my mother is a very prayerful person and great grandmother. It's in they used to pray for us. Mm -hmm. So I really feel, you know, that God had ordained me to come into this family, and that's how much I know about. I mean, the importance of my walk with God during my childhood. So it's like generation after generation, you've been a family that has been walking with God. Yes. So right in your young age, you've been observing people walking with the Lord, and that has been imbibed in you. Yes. And well, for the viewers who don't know what Jabba Kumari means. Uh, Kumari is a princess and Jebam in uh, our local dialect Tamil means prayer. So God had already ordained her to be a princess in prayer. So God bless you for that. And um, well from what age do you actually remember seeing your mom pray or your grandmother, great grandmother, you know, pray? And when did you actually start praying and how did you ever, you know, realize that there was somebody up there listening to you or you know, how did all those thoughts actually come into you? Sure. Maybe at the age of five. Okay. Uh, it so happened we were living in Hyderabad. Okay. And uh, it so happened my dad had to be transferred to Delhi. And at that point we were all in school, my siblings and me. And uh, so it would have been very difficult to shift to Delhi. And uh, so my mother came and told me. She told me now the choice is dad will be in Delhi and we'll live here and would you like it? So I told at that point, no, I want him to be here. Then she taught me that you need to pray. And I very vividly remember uh, there's a trunk box in front of which I knelt down and I prayed. And maybe that was my first experience, you know, my, my mother guided me to pray. And, uh, you know, you need to pray and get. And right enough, by God's grace, my father's transfer was also cancelled. He got the promotion plus the transfer to Delhi was stopped. Wow, that's amazing. So right at the age of five, yes. you learned how to pray and you learned how to receive your answer from the Lord. True. So that's really amazing. And how many siblings do you have? Uh, I have one brother and one sister, okay. both older to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are also very prayerful. And uh, one thing I would like to share is the power of mother's prayer. Uh, the brother, the brother immediately uh, before me, uh, he was uh, not very much in the Lord and uh, he was very, you know, he was involved with friends who were not very correct for him. And so uh, my mother used to, you know, pray consistently for him. He used to get all of us into trouble any number of times. <laughs> So, you know, she used to pray and pray and pray. My father would not like him because he was like this. But my mother would always support him and pray. And every time she prayed, she prayed with tears. And uh, at one point, he gave up everything. Yeah. All his friends. Mm. And he came back into the family. And uh, that's when, you know, we realize how much a prayer can do, especially a mother's prayer. And uh, to tell you what he is or who he is now, he is doing very well by God's grace in Hyderabad. And he is the one who prays in the family, for family prayers. Okay. And he's so actively involved in church. And uh, that's such a blessed uh, feeling you get when you see one brother who is not, you know, 
tuned in or living for the Lord and he being brought into the family and also to know Christ and that is something which I want to share. So you've been seeing miracles happening right inside your house and a total transformation of a person is I mean, like nobody can do it except the Lord. So you've always been living, watching testimonies, live testimonies, okay. miracles, signs and wonders. So I think you're very blessed that way. So as you grew up, maybe you came into the teens mm. and you would have had friends who, you know, would not have been in line with what your yeah. thoughts were, the way you were going. But how did you deal with all your friends? Yeah, so growing uh, in school and through college, uh, as you truly pointed out, it was not uh, uh, any Christian friends I had, literally no Christian friends at all. Uh, but what they would see is the discipline in life, which I can owe to my mother and going to church, prioritizing church and uh, you know speaking the truth and going to college every single day, not you know quitting or just sitting at home. In fact, if I take one day leave, they would all come and ask me, the entire class would come and ask me why you were not there yesterday. So that was so prominent, like it was maybe, I don't know at that point, maybe that would have you know caused them some to, some uh, for them to see that um, like I was being brought up in the way we should be brought up with the character and prioritizing God, worshipping Him. And of course I went through like any other Christian family, Sunday school and uh, then going into youth, youth fellowship and uh, so in all this I had gained you know the knowledge of Christ and was rooted and founded in Him which definitely helped me to, you know, I did have struggles to come over those struggles. Mm. That had been my anchor. So your fr friends found that there was something absolutely different in you. You stood yes, out true. in the crowd. Exactly. Yeah, so since Jesus was with you, so you made that difference. Um, but when you were praying and when you were seeing such signs, miracles and all that, have, has it been, you know, that you heard an audible voice or did you have visions where you saw Jesus? Um, did you have any such experience in your life? No, at that point not much. Mm. Uh, what happens is when, uh, this is something which uh, in fact my son told me. Mm. He said, we always go into Sunday school then we are pushed into youth fellowship and sometimes we don't, you know, imbibe it. Mm. It's just like, you know, your passion for Christ and you keep moving, running and there is nothing like, you know, you sit back and allow God to speak to you. Okay. Or, you know, mm. that doesn't happen much. Mm. It is more of you want to do something and you are doing continuously. So that part never, you know, mm. I never thought of that in those lines. Mm. So in fact, my son was telling me, only today I know that Bible is so practical. Mm. It needs to be lived. Mm. That we need to walk as Jesus walked. Mm. So uh, that is something which I, maybe I missed out in my early years. Mm. I was not you know, maybe focused on that part and that didn't happen. Okay, but um, I think now that you spoke about your son, mm -hmm. just like you said your great-grandmother, grandmother, mm -hmm. your mother influenced you. Yes. So he must have also seen a prayerful mother. So today he must have been so influenced by you that he's, you know, literally carrying the legacy down there yeah, and uh, true. it's awesome yeah, to yeah. listen to it, you know, especially yeah. when your kids come back and tell you something yeah. and something so positive, um, it really, it delights us quite a bit. And um, okay, now that you told me about your college days and things like that, um, after that, after college, how did your life go and you know, where did you take off and because you've been working, you would have been working in a bank and then you have been working, uh, you know, with students. So as far as your, uh, you know, work spot was concerned, yeah. how was it there and how could you imbibe Christ in those places? So, as you rightly pointed, uh, I was working in a bank and it was in Bangalore, I couldn't get a transfer. So, uh, this was the first step of walking in faith because I had to make a decision, quit that job and then take teaching profession. And this teaching profession was not permanent, so I did take that uh, profession based on God's you know, lead and putting my trust in Him because uh, the family was here, priority was family. My priority was also to uh, obey like you know, like my father-in-law who was very keen that I be a teacher rather than work in a bank. So that's how and uh, also uh, I would like to say that God keeps people here and there for your counsel and they might not be Christians at all. 
there was this one lady who took so much of care like her own daughter she was head of the department of botany and she was the one who pushed me and told me you have to work here in this college and also make sure that you will study further and you become a permanent faculty here so she had you know every step so even now when i look back i always uh, tell her i said it was god who first you know decided that i should come and teach and i always tell her you know it is your you know effort which has uh, helped me to come and that's how i started my career in a college okay that's really nice so god places those kingdom connections in the right Amen. place yes. so every decision you've taken in life you've gone very prayerfully yes and you've always prioritized your decisions uh, so when it came to family family was yes. first so because of that you were willing to give up a permanent job yes and take the risk of a temporary job here and um, it's nice so anyway god blessed you for mm -hmm. the right decisions that you took based upon him you know trusting in him so he never puts us down when we trust in him so as far as your career was concerned you moved from bangalore to the city of chennai for the sake of your family and uh, you started working here but uh, it would have been a great contrast you know you working in the bank and you working as a teacher so how did you you know how were you able to bridge this and settle down to be a teacher yeah uh, i think i had a passion to teach okay okay so i don't know most of us do that uh, when we play make believe schools you know mm -hmm. we we pretend to be teachers so i was doing that when i was a child and uh, then i used to take classes for vbs Okay. So that's all I knew about teaching when I entered. In fact, when the vice principal called me and she said, "Do you have any experience of teaching earlier?" I, you know, I was so naive. I told her, uh, "Yes, I've taught in a vacation Bible school." <laughs> so she gave, she smiled and she said, "Okay, nevertheless, you'll have to do uh, trial teaching." Mm -hmm. So in the live class, students are there, and you do trial teaching. Mm -hmm. And by God's grace, you know, I was able to teach okay. uh, first year, second year, third year, all on one day. and uh, yeah it was mm. it's really god's uh, grace mm. and i know his mercy so i was able to that's how it got into the college so maybe underlying there was a passion to teach and ability mm. to speak so it was the transition was not too difficult for me mm. so maybe that was an inborn talent that god had given you and uh, you would have thought that you were just playing you know with your mm, toys teaching yeah. them there and uh, maybe it was one step further when you went into vbs but yeah. it's awesome to see yes. the way god prepares us yeah. the seed that he puts into us yes. bears fruit in its time very true so sometimes we just take it like you know it's just like a play thing or something like that yeah. but oh you're doing a small ministry for the lord in your capacity but it's actually a training ground yeah. so everything that we go through in life is a training ground where god keeps training us and ultimately we achieve what he wants us to achieve in our life so now that you moved into this uh, teaching field you know okay you told me about a person who was mentoring you there but um, how was it with the other staff around you and uh, what impact could you make on the staff out there um my impact was that i would work sincerely okay and uh, without quoting any reasons or avoiding work so i was able to work under five heads of the department mm, that's difficult yeah and mm. all the five i was able to contribute so much when they were working mm. you know be of help to them so i don't know god never put the, i mean god gave me the spirit uh, to be obedient to the higher authorities and every time college says i don't know how many courses i would attend the training programs i would attend it bangalore delhi they have sent and i've never said no it has always been you know going and because that was my priority after family so i used to go diligently to all these things and as you rightly pointed out i think all these <coughs> adds up as a training ground for you mm. at that point i didn't realize but then now afterwards later in the years i was able to realize that because i worked with so many people I was exposed to so many things. I I knew how to handle situations. So that was something which you know I realized much later in life. But at that point, when it was happening, it was daily affair, doing how it should be done, being sincere, diligent, and dedicated. So when you're talking to me about you know you working under so many mm -hmm. heads, I just remember Daniel in the Bible. So he, although he was a slave and working under three different kings, since he was sincere in what he did. his work was blessed 
So I think the Bible also tells us that we need to be sincere in what we do and we need to do everything as to the Lord. So I mean like it's really been imbibed in you that whatever you do you need to do it as to the Lord. So that's exactly how you were able to manage so many heads of departments and it's not praise God mm -hmm. all that easy to manage them all. Uh, so as far as your staff were concerned, now this was your testimony. Mm -hmm. Now when it came to the students, mm -hmm. what was it? Yeah, students um, like um, I did have an opportunity to teach scripture for them. So okay. that was one ground where I could uh, sort of uh, influence them or maybe expose them to Christ. Mm -hmm. And uh, secondly, it is um, the way in which you deal with the students. So you, you need to be kind, you need to be firm and uh, uh, there, are, there were uh, not much uh, incidences where I could share directly okay. but uh, every time a girl would come for uh, her birthday to offer sweets and ask for a blessing I put my hand on her and I would say a silent prayer in my heart for the girl I said Lord this is a soul I want somehow the soul to come to you so I took that as an opportunity and and of course giving them enough uh, counsel that was something where I could make an impact on them there were many students who really needed counselling. So at that point, those were times when I could tell them how I mean important it is to honour parents, honour God and things of that sort. So I think God has given you an opportunity, you know, to not only minister within your family or, you know, your work spot, but in different places as well. Uh, so it was so nice that you were sharing all these things with us. So we would meet you in the next episode to listen to much more from you. So viewers, I think you would have enjoyed listening to her journey from you know, when she was a child, how she walked with God until the point where she has come to the college as a lecturer dealing with students, dealing with staff and you know, parents and things like that. So we would meet you in the next episode where she will continue sharing her walk with God. And I know her walk will impact not only you, impact me also and the others who listen to this and definitely as an Enoch generation, we too would walk with God and one day walk off with Him. God bless you all.
நாட்களிலும் சோர்வுகளின் மத்தியிலும் இன்பத்தின் நாட்களிலும் நேசரின் சத்தத்தை கேட்கும்படியாய் என் செவிகள் திறந்திடுதே நேசரின் சத்தத்தை கேட்கும்படியாய் என் செவிகள் திறந்திடுதே இரக்கத்தின் தேவன் என்னேல் மனம் இறங்கும் ஈரவும் பகலும் கதரும் சத்தத்தை கேட்டிடவாருமே கேட்டிடவாருமே 